Thank you for listening to the Photo Funky Show, episode number 70. Today we're going to be talking about comic convention photography, and I've got seven tips for you. And then if we get a few more in there, we'll see how that goes. My name is William Beam, and I really appreciate you listening to us. This is episode 70. We have a comic convention that's coming to Orlando 10 days away from when I'm recording this on Sunday, and that is Star Wars Celebration. I've been to this a couple of times. I've also been to Megacon and a couple of other comic conventions for doing a little photography there. It's an interesting experience, and it's something that even if you don't think that it's your style, you might want to go try because not only are some of the costumes, some of the displays, and the material that people sell there or trade, it's all interesting, but it is also really a wonderful exercise for going out and engaging with people that you want to be photography subjects. So if you're a little shy, kind of hide behind your camera, going to a comic convention is really good practice for being a little bit more engaging. So if you're on the introverted side, which I got to tell you, I am, it is actually a lot of fun out there. You kind of forget about your own introversions because there is just such a spectacle of color and activity going on at these conventions. It's really worth going. There are a lot of wonderful people that go to comic conventions. And particularly, I really enjoy the Star Wars Celebration conventions. That is kind of what our topic is for today. And just as usual, I want to let you know that you can find a transcript of the show for free at williambeam.com slash episode 70. Links to subscribe to the show will be on the show notes page. And of course, you can find them on photoflunky.com, which is kind of where our podcast player is. You can listen to this episode and other episodes all the way back to the first one. Finally, I want to remind you, get your free copy of my ebook, Creative Portraits. You can get it at williambeam.com slash free book, or you can text the phrase CP book to the number 33444. Okay, let's get down to comic convention photography. That's a mouthful in itself, isn't it? Really, the reasons why you go to this is because there are a lot of passionate people. The people who go here are normal, everyday people. You just simply wouldn't notice it by the way some of them dress when they go to a comic convention. And I am really impressed with the amount of dedication they put into the things that they create. A lot of these folks have created their own costumes. At the Star Wars conventions, I'm also seeing a lot of building going on. There are people who build their own droids. I mean, they have droid races. They have panels there on how to build your own droids. They also have these dioramas that people have set up with, you know, little miniature figures that I remember seeing something like the whole Battle of Hoth on uh, one of the Star Wars celebration conventions that was in town and a number of other ones. But they're also full-size set. There are some Belgian builders who seem to go to every one of these things and they build amazing sets. I'll put a, this copy of the photo in the show notes page. I've got a photo of a character dressed up as Princess Leia inside the Millennium Falcon. And honestly, you would think it was shot on the movie set. I have seen a life-size TIE fighter interceptor built there. And as well as a number of other displays, I've seen, you know, Jabba the Hutt full size at his palace and Jawas running around the place. And it, it's just amazing what kind of creativity people put in this. So in other words, if you like to do on-set photography with people in costume, this is an amazing opportunity. So let's go ahead and get started with the, with the tips. And the first one is, obviously you want to check for restrictions at the event. And that includes personal restrictions. So I'll tell you what I mean by that. First, the event. With Star Wars Celebration, it says on their page that you can bring your camera for either still or video. And on the floor where all the, I guess all the displays are and where people are moving around, plus other parts of the convention center, you're free to take photos. But inside of the panels where they're going to be showing maybe some video or something like that, photography is restricted and you could get booted out. So make sure you check what the restrictions are for the event that you're going to be going to. Now, when I talk about personal restrictions, what I mean is you can't just go around snapping photos of the people who are attending. There's a saying in this kind of field, cosplay does not equal consent. If you want to take a photograph of somebody who's in costume and obviously attending the event and, and kind of working the scene, ask them first. And this is one of the reasons why I said it's a good opportunity to go out and develop some you know, practice going up to strangers and just saying, hi, I'm so-and-so, I like to take photos. Would you mind if I took your photo? And the reactions you get, generally in my experience, have been positive. You may get some people to say, I am busy right now, but I can arrange time to meet with you later. There are some people who say, sure, take a picture now. And also some of those dioramas that I mentioned at the Star Wars celebration conventions, 
are available for people to go up there and take their photo. And there was no extra charge when I did this. It was something these Belgian builders did it is remarkable work. And there's often a line kind of going up there where people want to take their photos. So make sure you check before you go on a set. One, if you're allowed to, because sometimes these things may be a little fragile. Two, you also want to check to make sure that you're not jumping in front of the line of somebody else that may be waiting to take their photo. There are a number of group shots that will happen at these events. So keep in mind that not all of the shots are going to be inside of the area where you see all the vendors and displays. The next tip, number two, I'm going to want to tell you about is bring a white balance card. The lighting in convention centers is horrible. It's like sodium vapor. It has a green kind of tint to it. It is just miserable stuff. You want to be able to make sure that you can get your color and make sure the skin tones are going to be right. At the very minimum, I would suggest bringing, you know, some kind of a small white balance card. I don't care if it's something that came out of the back of a book, if you get a little last to light uh, pop-up thing, or maybe you bring your x right color check passport. And I'll have links to all of those in the show notes as well. But you want something to make sure that you're getting the color correct. Because one, like I said, the skin tone is going to be horrible under these lights. And two, some of these costumes really work with the colors that they're having. It's a very colorful event. You want to make sure you capture the right colors. White balance at a minimum, I would say an x right color check passport would probably be one of your best bets. Tip number three, and we kind of went over this a little bit, but engage with the people attending the event. And by that, I mean, don't hide behind your camera. Compliment them on their costumes. Ask them questions about the character. Sometimes I'll go to these events, even if it's a Star Wars event, and I'm, I'm kind of, you know, follow Star Wars. I watch the movies multiple times. I like, enjoy the TV shows, but I don't know every character in the whole Star Wars mythology. I never really got into reading many of the books, but there are characters that have come out of some of the books that people will dress up and I don't know who they are. So I will ask, you know, it's like, who is your character? What he or she done or what's it all about? And that's a good way, even if you know what the character is, it's a good way to bring somebody out and just start a dialogue, have a little question. You will find that some of the people who go to these events are actually quite popular in the cosplay community. I mean, I, I wasn't aware of some of them, but I remember I met a woman named Femme Trooper Julie, I think her name was. And, you know, she's dressed up like a stormtrooper with kind of like a little, you know, bare midriff showing and, and you know, lovely woman. She's got a following. I want to make sure that you engage with someone like that because the next thing I'm going to say is you want to offer to provide them with photos. If they like your work, they'll share it with their community and following, and that might bring some business or some traffic back to your website or, or page, whatever you want to do. So by all means, engage with the people at the event. These are fun people. They're engaging. They're very passionate about what they do, and it's a good reason to get away from hiding behind your camera and just have fun with the event. One of the downsides of a comic convention like Star Wars Celebration or Megacon or any of the others is you've got to watch out for your backgrounds. There is junk and clutter all over the place. There are lights that will kind of shine around in different places. Some of them might have a stage where, you know, how uh, like at a concert or, or some kind of a show, the stage lights may be rotating and might just hit your camera at the wrong time. If you're creative, you may want to use that flare for dramatic effect in your photos, or you may want to avoid it. That's, you know, your choice. But watch your backgrounds. One of the things I'll recommend is if there are sets built, see if you can use those because one, that'll give you a nice clear background and it will be appropriate for the character. The other suggestion I would have is don't necessarily take your photos inside the convention hallway where all the traffic is going on. Here in Orlando at the Orange County Convention Center, there is beautiful window light just outside that hallway. And you can probably find an empty area where you can have a plain background, have beautiful light, without all that green stuff coming from the fluorescent and sodium vapor lights overhead. And you might get some of your best shots if you're just going to do straight up portraits out in the foyer rather than inside of the convention hall. I'm up to tip number five, and that would be don't overload on gear. You're going to be walking around. There's a lot of people there. In my case, I kind of like to go with one body and one lens. It's very rare that I want to take too much stuff with me, but at the maybe one more lens, probably at a maximum. And for me, that might mean walking around with my 24 to 70 and also having an 85 millimeter prime, you know, in a messenger bag or shoulder bag of something like that. You don't want to have too much stuff. There is one thing that I kind of would recommend, and not everybody's going to be up for this, but here, here's an example. Trying to take photos in that horrible lighting environment is, it doesn't work well as an available light photo, I, I think, because of the color and the lighting. Bringing external lighting, like if you want to have a flash, if you have it on your camera, you've, you've pretty much kind of ruined your shot there anyways. 
getting off camera light is difficult as well, because then suddenly you're in a position where you either need to stand or a person helping you, or you're gonna be holding your arm way out with a light modifier and you, you're just gonna be bulked down. What I'm gonna recommend is actually bringing a small tripod and doing HDR portraits. It works better with some people than it does with others. It depends upon their ability to hold still. And of course, the faster you can flick off your exposures, the less motion you're gonna have in them. But the portraits that I'm gonna show on the show notes page are all gonna be HDR portraits. I found they work the best, I get the best color out of them, and I get plenty of detail and depth. It really worked out well, and I found that a lot of the people who are into cosplay, and also the folks who are doing the droid racing, you know, trying to set up some of their stuff, work best with using a tripod and doing HDR portraits rather than using the available light in the convention hall or trying to use light and then balancing your light with that uh, sodium vapor, you know, fluorescent kind of light. It's, it's just horrible. So give some thought to taking a very small tripod. You don't want to have something set up that's splayed out that other people may be tripping on because the conventions, they get very crowded. You don't want to be in anybody's way. I've been able to do this at a number of conventions here in Orlando. Other conventions may vary. You want, probably want to check to see if there's going to be anyone who turns you away if you do come in with a tripod. But it's something to consider. If it's available and you can uh, take your photos with a tripod, you're probably going to do better because the lighting conditions are horrible and there's not much light. You're going to have slow shutter speeds, and which means you're going to be cranking up your ISO really high. So if you can uh, get a tripod and get a stable platform and ask you, if you've got uh, portrait subjects, ask them to hold still. Most of the software these days does a very good job of kind of minimizing ghosting. And if you're going to take a photo of a scene or maybe the droids or some other kind of stagnant character, then you don't even have to worry about asking anybody to hold still. Finally, I mentioned the window light coming in the foyer of the convention hall. Keep in mind that not all of the great shots are in the convention hall. There are plenty of people who are walking around the foyer. Also, if there are going to be group shots, they're usually they're going to find a staircase, you know, so they can kind of drape the people up and down the stairs and they'll have tons of people in costume ready for a group shot. Those are opportunities where a lot of photographers are going to be around. You kind of have to jockey for position a little bit, but you're also going to find people walking back and forth and it may be easier to approach somebody in that foyer rather than in the convention hall itself. So not all the great shots are in the convention hall. I hope this helps you out. If you're considering going to a comic convention to or doing photography, I really would urge you to do it. I've had a lot of fun doing this in the past. And I think the people who are attending these are great. The people who are putting on the shows are great. Just remember, everybody has their own little rules about whether they are willing to engage in photography or not. And of course, some of the conventions are not going to allow photography in the panels or places where they're screening videos. So make sure that you don't break the rules or you don't upset anybody and you will have a wonderful time with your comic convention photography. Thank you so much for listening to the Photo Flunky Show. I really appreciate you. Show notes are going to be available at williambean.com slash episode 70. And of course, you can find a transcript of the show there for free. Please subscribe. We would love to have you as a subscriber of this podcast. You can find links on the show notes page. So you can subscribe on iTunes, Google Play Music, Blueberry, Stitcher Radio. And of course, all those links are also at photoflunky.com on the player. Finally, don't forget to claim your free copy of Creative Portrait at williambean.com slash free book or just simply whip out your phone and text the phrase CP book to the number 33444. Thank you so much. We'll see you again next week.